So AliExpress recently had their 11.11 sale, which outside of Black Friday is usually the biggest sale they have each year. And I bought quite a few watches to try and find some bargains. Four in total, um, the other one's gonna be saved for another video. But I was really excited to try these three because it looked like they'd be really good value for money. But I've since learned that all may not be as it seems. So let's take a closer look at them. So you can see all three are Addy's Dive watches. And that's because Addy's Dive is one of these cheap brands that I'm the most excited about at the moment. Mainly because they seem to have started to experiment with some more original designs as of late. And I thought that was the case again here. I thought uh, that some of these watches I'd ordered were pretty original because I hadn't seen these designs before. However, I've since learned that at least two of them are basically clones of a watch that I just had never come across. So we'll take a look at those first, and then the last one, uh, it's a bit more obvious. So these, all these watches in fact, all three of these, should be kind of like gather watches, go anywhere, do anything watches, with a fairly dressy but still versatile design. I have to say, <laughs> a clone or not, the watch actually looks really good here. I bought all of these with my own money, by the way, although they didn't cost much at all, as is often the case with AliExpress. I'll link all these watches in the video description, by the way, if you want to check any of them out. And this should be the same watch, just a different color. And there we go. So this watch is the Addy's Dive AD2066. I've got to say it's a uh, very good looking watch for the money because these each cost me less than 40 quid a pop. And outside of the slightly dodgy logo, I mean, these look incredible for that amount of money. So incredible that I got very excited about receiving these watches after I ordered them because I thought these were a somewhat original design. But no, after I saw some YouTube videos when these were already on their way, it turns out these are a copy of the Longines Conquest where the dials are almost identical to this basically, although these do come in some slightly different colors and also the case is a lot smaller. This is apparently 36 millimeter watch, whereas I'm not sure I've seen a 36 mil of the original. And also each of these are basically just using the same case that Addy's Dive likes to reuse on a lot of their lower end watches, which is this kind of Rolex Datejust style case. So I think that's a little bit different. And of course the original Longines Conquest, as you can Imagine, given this is a clone, there are some similarities already to some of these Rolex models. So yeah, I'm feeling a little bit uh, ripped off, a little bit scammed, but I scam myself, I guess. They don't advertise anywhere that this is a, uh, a clone or anything like that. But in the flesh, I mean, these look uh, astoundingly good, I've got to say, for the money. Both using a Mecha Quartz movement, I believe. Let's have a look at the specs. So stainless steel case, 22mm uh, lug width. 10 bar water resistance, apparently. And it's got some sort of Seiko Mecha Quartz inside. It doesn't specify it here, but I'm sure it's a Seiko. It also says dial diameter 35 to 39 millimeters. I mean, I didn't see any other size options for this watch. Apparently has K1 mineral glass as well. Now K1 is like a hardened mineral crystal. Whether that's true or whether it's just standard mineral remains to be seen, I suspect the latter. There is an anti-reflective coating on there. It's like a slight blue hue. Crystal legibility looks reasonable. It's like a uh, bubble style crystal where it's uh, upturned the edges. Now this mint green one was really the reason for ordering uh, these watches. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, it's a fantastic looking watch, whether it's original or not for uh, 30 something quid. I mean, look at the sunburst. It's uh, quite impressive there. Thankfully, Addy's Dive has used this written version of the logo on this watch rather than the abomination that is the dive style logo that they often use. This new one, I mean, it's not great admittedly, but it is much better than that. And it's one of them where it kind of slips by the wayside at certain angles. Watch is overall very thin because of that movement. I suspect probably thinner than the Longines, but we'll test that in a second. And then the gray one too. Now the gray one might end up being more versatile, but it's also uh, the much more plain of the two, you can see there's absolutely no sunburst or anything on that, despite what the pictures might have you believe. One aspect of the watch that definitely looks better than I was expecting is the markers. They're actually quite complex markers, at least from first impressions, and the hands look a little bit cleaner than I expected too. Always like these Mecha Quartz watches. Let's see what the sizing actually is. Width ways we've got. Ah, so it's actually a bigger 
It says 36 mil on lots of the listings, but it's actually 36 point eight there on the width lug to lug is 46 millimeters and then including the bubble crystal it's just under 11 mil thick but if you exclude that it is actually very thin somewhere around 8.5 millimeters i'd say and that seems to be the case with uh, both of these they're using the same case now i've got a small six and a quarter inch wrist and yeah this sits uh near perfectly on my arm and you can see there the uh the thinness of the watch. I do really like it actually. I mean, the price difference between this and the original is mental. I mean, I mean the Longines when I just checked was almost 2000 pounds. Whereas this is uh, 30 something. And because this watch is so cheap, I haven't had to pay any import fees on this. I think because it falls below the threshold. I would like to find some more original designs if I'm honest, that's what I was hoping. I think I'll have to do more of a thorough search next time. And then there's the gray one. Like I said, maybe the more versatile of the two. And you get that uh, semi-smooth second hand because it's a Mecha Quartz. But the next watch we're looking at is not Mecha Quartz, it's automatic. But for £80, uh, this one looked just as crazy spec-wise. And in here should be the AD2071. I also bought this with my own money again. Now this one, it's a more blatant Rolex Oyster Perpetual clone, I think. But it had a couple of minor differences and it also just had this clickbait style dial on the product listings the dial looks incredibly vivid which just generated a bit of curiosity so we'll see if it actually looks as good as in the renderings i can't remember what color i ordered maybe red now addy's dive is just one of these brands like san martin i would wish that they would try some more original designs even if the first few are failures because then we can get some bangers in the long run that don't just look like copies of other stuff Ah, so I already recognized something with this one, and that is the case. I can tell straight away that this is reusing some of the cases again, like we've seen on previous automatic Addis dive watches. I mean, this one's gonna look even more like the Rolex uh, Datejust or the other Oyster Perpetual models. And wow, the dial actually looks fantastic. I think this was, what, 83 pounds I paid for this. I mean, the dial is, it's actually a really classy, like slightly deeper red than you'd think from the product shots. Yeah, and that is, I mean, it's a very attractive watch, but it is pretty much a clone. It does have a uh, bubbled crystal again, which I'm not sure if these newer gen Rolex models come with a bubble crystal like that. But the only problem with this case, it's just, it's really thick. As you can see here, it's, it's really quite thick which you might not realize from some of the stock photos as for the specs it is a 316l steel case it says here 39 mil diameter so we'll give that a check it supposedly has sapphire which i'll also check and i'll also check the previous two because i can't remember and they said they were mineral didn't they supposedly has a screw down crown which it does well they did the last two also had a screw down crown though so that was decent and what movement do we have in here supposedly a seiko nh35 again so yeah that's the main drawback as far as i see apart from the copied uh, nature of the design i'll give you a nice close-up of that so yeah much more uh, subtle than i expected actually one of the best looking dials I've seen on AliExpress as far as the tone goes. Of course, you still have the slightly dodgy text, but overall still um, relatively well constructed for the money and well specced, but we'll test the crystal, then we'll show you that one on the wrist. So here we have the uh, $700 Timex James Brand GMT, which if this wasn't Sapphire, I'd be very shocked. So yeah, that is Sapphire. It gives us a nice positive reading. Now let's check this dirt cheap Addy's dive. And again, gives us a nice positive reading. That is almost certainly Sapphire. And just to check the 2066, this shouldn't give us any reading now. Maybe it is hardened. Because that's, even that one notch is the most I've ever got out of a mineral crystal. So maybe I've calibrated it wrong, which I doubt, or it is actually hardened. So from above this 2071, I mean, it looks uh, baller. It does look a lot more expensive, but uh, it's just cumbersome. It's not awful but it's not the most flush to the arm because of that protruding case back and it's just really quite thick. You'd have to have larger wrists to get away with this. And that's despite the measurements. Let's check the measurements. Only 38.7 wide, but definitely wears bigger than that. 48 mil lug to lug. And this thickness is 13.2 mil with the crystal. Without it, you're looking somewhere more like about 11 millimeters. So still relatively thick, but it does look good. 
not my cup of tea. Uh, I prefer the more original designs. It's what I was hoping for, at least with the other two. But I'll also uh, affiliate link it below if you do want to check this watch out. I mean, that dial is uh, undeniably nice. I mean, this is the thing with that previous uh, Timex James brand GMT. I mean, this here is supposed to be 750 quid, but the dial is just so plain. I don't know. It just takes away from it, even though it's made... You know, of a more premium material and everything else. Which one stands out on the wrist? It, I mean, it's the red one, probably. Even if this one is uh, more performant in just about every other way. Now, I'm curious to see if they've cut costs in a department you don't usually think about. Luminescent. It looks like they both have the same compound of loom here. And we'll see how that lasts. Wow, I'm going to be honest, that's been on for what, like 20 seconds now almost 30 seconds that's doing fairly well now the uh, rolex clone is going to be more visible just due to the bigger markers but they're both at least serviceable in that regard as well surprisingly so yeah that's my um semi failed aliexpress haul i actually like the look of all of these watches uh, it's just a shame that they are copies pretty much i'll have another uh, unboxing coming up soon where we will take a look at the final one which is in here which should be maybe even more ridiculous